Tonight on Connecticut's news station, the 2024 legislative session kicks off. But the governor's state of the state was interrupted by demonstrators. We're breaking down what happened and what lawmakers are already pushing for tonight, live from the Capitol. And Fotis Dulos' former employee back on the stand today in the Michelle Traconis trial. We'll have the latest from court. It looks like a... And addressing crumbling foundations in our state, we'll show you how a new program's helping homeowners in a story you'll only see here on Fox 61. Breaking news now on Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Good evening and thanks for joining us for the Fox 61 News at 6. I'm Brent Harden. And I'm Sarah Sanchez. We're following breaking news tonight. One person is dead in a crash involving a dirt bike and a school bus in Hartford. Fox 61's Jake Garcia is live on the scene now. Uh, Jake, what do we know so far? Well, Brent and Sarah can tell you it happened all just before 3 o'clock this afternoon here at the intersection of Barber Street and Tower Avenue. Police say that a driver of a dirt bike ran a red light here at this light on Tower Avenue when it collided with this school bus. Now, Hartford police say the bus was making a left turn at the light when the crash occurred. The Hartford Fire Chief tells us when first responders arrived, they worked to extricate the driver out of the dirt bike from underneath the bus. EMS began performing CPR before taking the driver to a local hospital where they were pronounced dead. The driver of the school bus stayed on scene and is cooperating with police. This wasn't what we normally see, like, like a, a pack of 20 or 30. This was, like, again, like I said, a, a, a lone operator. In February, when people aren't looking for them, it's very dangerous, especially dirt bikes up city streets. Again, we don't know if this is a legally registered one or not. Uh, we'll get to that. And police have yet to identify the driver of the dirt bike. The accident reconstruction team is on scene and the crime scene division is leading the investigation. Now back out here live, investigators say that they do have video of the crash from both the school bus and these surveillance cameras here at the intersection of Barber and Tower. Uh, now they do say that uh, that they that uh, excuse me, Tower Street, actually from Garden to Hampton Street is closed while the investigation is ongoing. Live in Hartford, Jake Garcia, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Thank you, Jake. The 2024 legislative session kicks off today. Lawmakers are back at the state capitol with a long list of priorities and only three months to get it all done. Fox 61 political reporter Emma Wolfhorst was there as the session gaveled in. She joins us live from the state capitol now. So, uh, Emma, what do legislators want to accomplish in these next 13 weeks? Well, Brent, Sarah, they have quite a few priorities, but the top three that I heard over and over mentioned today, housing, education, and climate change. Governor Ned Lamont driving those three home during his state of the state and budget address this morning, but with a sort of unexpected interjection today in the gallery. Governor Ned Lamont's State of the State address coming to a sudden pause Wednesday as pro-Palestinian demonstrators chanted and attempted to unfurl banners in the House chamber. Whatever the justice of your cause, I think you do a disservice when you're rude and disrespectful in a room like this, disrespecting the people in this room and disrespecting the audience. Lamont quickly getting back to business. Eight months ago, we passed on a strongly bipartisan basis a two-year budget, which unlike most of our peer states, is still in the black. The state's $51 billion two-year budget is largely set, but lawmakers will open it back up for possible adjustments this session. On the governor's list, housing, addressing climate change, workforce development, and education. The lack of housing drives up costs for everybody else. Our teachers and paras need help, and our kids still need some catching up. Lawmakers on both sides of the aisle feeling positive after Lamont's speech. His priorities of early childhood, I think, are important ones that we should continue to look at the next generation because they have really still been impacted. Um, and, uh, and I think overall maintaining those fiscal guardrails. Connecticut's fiscal guardrails a major topic for the 2024 session. A lot of groups want more money. Nonprofits, higher education, childcare, housing, and others are already clamoring for a piece of the state's historic surplus. But Connecticut's strict spending cap stands in the way. Not everybody's going to get what they want, but 
Uh, these are not, these are issues that are really not mutually exclusive. Let's grow our economy, let's meet the goals of the state, but let's make sure we're doing it in a responsible way. And are you confident this session that you can strike that balance of keeping the fiscal guardrails while also making those major investments that, as you said, it seemed like there's a lot of bipartisan support for? We got 13 weeks to figure that out. And while Republican leadership tells me they were happy with the governor's speech and with wanting to keep those fiscal guardrails in place, there were a couple priorities they felt the governor should have mentioned during the address, namely crime and juvenile justice. Now, as we've said, this is a short session with a long to-do list, but all the lawmakers I spoke to today tell me they're ready to hit the ground running. Reporting live at the Capitol, Emma Wolforst, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Day 19 of the Michelle Traconis trial, and the ex-employee of Fotis Dulos is once again taking the stand. And this time he's being pressed by the defense. Fox 61's Julie LeBlanc joins us outside Stanford Superior Court with more. Were you driving your Toyota Tacoma on the morning of May 24th, 2019? No. With Pavel Gumieni taking the stand a second time, the state showing surveillance videos to verify his testimony from Tuesday. You don't remember? You didn't say this yesterday? All while the defense spent the afternoon poking holes in it. The ex-employee of Fotis Dulos describing his first encounter with police after his boss's estranged wife, Jennifer Farber Dulos, went missing. Attorney John Schoenhorn pointing out at first, Gumieni didn't reveal everything to them. You didn't tell him at that that point that you were actually over at 585 Deercliff in Avon. At that time, no. You didn't tell him you'd been at a junkyard in Southington for a couple of hours, did you? No. At that time, Gemeni says he had the seats of his Toyota Tacoma in the company car he was driving. That Tacoma is the same one police believe Fotis used in the commission of the crime. Gemeni says the days after Fotis got the Tacoma detailed and pressed his employee to change the seats in his car or buy a new one. In court Wednesday, Schoenhorn pulling up these screenshots, allegedly showing Gumiani's search history weeks before Jennifer disappeared. So even the day that the police were questioning you, you were still looking to replace your Tacoma. Isn't that right? Possible. I mean, if it's on my phone, I, I don't deny it. And you had told Mr. Dulos that you were seeking to replace your Tacoma, weren't you? Didn't you, I mean? I did. And as for that comment Chaconis allegedly made about Jennifer after one of the Dulos's dogs needed to be put down. And then she said, I'm going to kill that be when she turns up. Schoenhorn implying it was all a sick joke to cheer Fotis up. I wouldn't call it a joke, but yeah. In a, well, you're cheering somebody up with some Not humor, sure, yeah. right? Not that kind of humor, but yeah. With Gumiani in the spotlight, his attorney speaking with reporters outside the courthouse. I think the last two days, again, are sort of mixed because he hates the spotlight. He's a very private individual, but by the same token, we're here now, and this is the beginning of the end of the circus for him, so he can get back to his life. Now, in redirect, the state pointing out that Gumiati had actually been searching for a new Toyota Tacoma for about a year prior to Jennifer going missing, and that Fotis was aware of that the entire time. Now, as for Gumiati's attorney, well, he says as far as he's concerned, his client was never a suspect in this case. We are in Stamford, Julia LeBlanc, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Time for a check of the forecast. Another sunny day across the state. Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank joining us now with a look. Rach? We love the weather here moving forward tomorrow. We continue with the sunshine and temperatures that'll be just a couple of degrees warmer. And that slow warming trend will peak heading into the weekend when it feels a little bit like spring on Saturday. For now, it's 39 degrees in the Hartford area, near 40 degrees for New Haven. And we did have some clouds pass through this afternoon, although most of the day was sunny and I think tomorrow it's just full on blue skies from start to finish as we are gearing up for the news at 11 temperatures will be close to freezing and by daybreak we're in the 20s so stepping outside the door tomorrow morning is what is now a familiar sight. Lots of sunshine heading towards lunchtime. Temperatures are going to be close to 40 and we'll see high temperatures in the middle and even upper 40s as we head through tomorrow afternoon. As impressive as that sounds, again, the warming trend 
doesn't end here. Your full forecast, we'll talk about it coming up. All right, Rachel, thank you. Well, a Manchester woman faces animal cruelty charges for performing surgery on a pregnant dog without a license. Janice Martinez was arrested for performing a C-section on the dog, claiming she was a retired veterinarian, which she is not. According to the arrest warrant, the procedure was performed for $600 on a kitchen table in her home, and there were people in the room reportedly smoking marijuana. Martinez is expected in court on February 20th. A Connecticut company faces federal lawsuits for allegedly selling defective products to fertility clinics across the United States. The attorney says countless embryos were killed because of negligence. The company Cooper Surgical in Trumbull sold a liquid used in the Petri dish used to create an embryo. Magnesium is a key ingredient in the liquid, but the attorney says these samples did not have magnesium in them, killing almost all chances of an embryo forming. I have multiple different couples that I represent who have sold their cars, um, sold jewelry, uh, cashed in um, education funds and taken the hit on that. So people really are going deep into debt just to try and finance this. Four more suits were filed just last week. Cooper Surgical has not commented. If you suspect your fertility clinic was involved, we have more information for you on our website. Still to come here on the News at 6, tweeted.